Hey folks, wanted to give a quick overview of the social network MeWe. If you go to MeWe.com, you will come to this social network that is potentially a replacement for Facebook. And of course, we know that Facebook has many, many reasons to not be trusted, mainly because of their need to make money and what they do as a result of it. Primarily, they institute an algorithm where they can control what people see, they can control whether businesses follow, businesses can reach their followers or not. And of course, bad actors can use those to their own ends because all the micro-targeting can be used to either influence people to vote or not vote. So there are many, many reasons to distrust Facebook. So having an option that can fulfill some of Facebook's primary purposes for us, um, which in my mind is be able to the ability to keep in touch with friends and family, um, to have uh, topical groups, and to have local um, groups to that we can organize in for events and stuff, and of course, personal things like just organizing birthday parties and whatnot. So, I believe that Mui uh, got okay. So, I don't know what the hell their name is. It's I'm assuming it's Mui. It, doesn't quite roll off the tongue. I mean, it's probably not Mew because that'd be weird. I guess they will leave the E on. Anyway, I'm just rambling at this point, so let's just move on. Okay, so when you go to MeWe.com, this is what you see, and what really caught my eye the first time I got here was this. No ads, no spyware, no BS. Um, if Facebook didn't have ads, it would be a better place. If Facebook didn't have an algorithm, it'd be a better place. If Facebook wasn't spying on us and knowing what websites we go to based on the uh, pixels that the website owners place, they wouldn't. They would know less about us. So I like this so far. So if we scroll down a little bit, we'll have some trust indicators. I guess they were Mimi was introduced at um, South by Southwest in 2016, and here we have their main um, bullet points here. So trust. This is an important part here um, where they specifically note data is not to be shared or sold. Um, having full control of your news feeds and the order of the posts you appear is also super important. And they state here, we do not manipulate, filter, or change the order of your news feeds. So next is safety, and they're committed to creating a safe place for all walks of life without fear of intimidation or bullying. This remains to be seen because they have policies that are in place now the question is will they enforce these policies or not and they could be like twitter where they're they have policies that they just won't enforce so you'll have nazis um spouting their rhetoric and they can just basically do it willy-nilly under the guise of free speech or in some cases if you're the president just because his words are um, quote-unquote important and lastly, positive connections, they really want to just focus on the positive stuff. So again, they go back to the no ads, no spyware, no BS. And they, now they have, there's a chat and texting app. So that's actually useful because we do use Facebook chat quite a bit these days. So the important thing is, do they really back this up? So they make sure by having a privacy bill of rights where they focus on that we own our own content and that it's not theirs. Big plus. No third-party targeted advertisements, another plus. Full control over your newsfeed, another plus. Do not manipulate, filter, or change the order of your newsfeeds, so forth. Okay, so they are on the ball. I mean, they get it. They're they may, they're made with privacy in mind. So the rest of these, um, I don't want to go to belabor them because you can read them yourself. But what I did want to go through is actually look at their privacy policy because that's where the sneaky stuff can be. So again, they reiterate their Bill of Rights. Um, they note that you own your content. Um, they don't track or sell data. Um, you know, third-party service providers is pretty normal stuff. Cookies is normal stuff. I mean, you can't have um, either, you can't run a website without having either of those involved. I mean, you could, but it probably would um, limit what you can do in terms of what the website offers. Message disappearance. This is cool. I've not, I've not actually been able to tell where this is, but some messages just disappeared. I like the fact um, that it does. I'm guessing they're kind of looking at um, Snapchat for that. Okay, identity protection, and then what they do. This is all of this stuff is really basic. 
So, and it's a good privacy policy from what I can tell. I also want to take a peek at their terms of service just to see what is their terms of service. Okay, so acceptable use, normal things, what are their rights reserved? And here it is. Me, we may permanently cancel accounts of user who violate the terms of service. So, um, so it remains to be seen whether they will actually um, enforce their terms of service or not. Okay, their privacy, user content ownership here. Materials including but not limited to blah, 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 are owned by the party contributing such content. So that's where they state specifically that we own our content. So if I post a picture uh, on MeWe, I own it and so forth. Excellent. Okay, so um, I like this here too. Misuse of usernames, page names, and group names. Uh, you can't sell this stuff. So, and group name squatting. Okay, so I think that helps organizations where, um, you know, like there's that skeevy websites that look like, um, you know, scammer websites. They'll say, they'll look Google dot something.com so it looks like Google but it's not so that's what they're doing here is trying to prevent um, squatting and uh, uh, masquerading as another person okay I also like this fake account section here you may not register or create fake and misleading accounts again it depends on whether they actually follow through on their terms of service on enforcing their terms of service or not but this is also good okay on spam data security Data portability. You can retrieve your entire content data from MeWe at any time. Excellent. You have a right to delete your account. Really good. So secret chat is not something I've seen yet, but I, it sounds like this is an encrypted chat, similar to how, um, I guess, iMessage is, in, is encrypted. And they're deleted after they're delivered successfully. I have not, I have not figured out where this is yet. Maybe it's a paid, um, feature um, and about this page feature thing I'll get to that a bit later okay so additional policies for pages groups and events so misleading and false pages so it really gives them uh, reasons to remove fake accounts which is what we would ideally like now whether they're gonna enforce these uh, things or not remains to be seen okay what else here uh, Okay, ownership, I, I did notice this line again, ownership in and to the site and services other than the user content, content which we do not own and claim no ownership of. So obviously they own the site, the name MeWe and stuff and the services and whatnot, but I like that they re reiterate that they do not own or claim ownership to user content. So this is big. I, I like this so far quite a bit. All right, solid terms of service. I'm pretty happy with that so far. So let's log in and see what it looks like. Okay, so we see something kind of Facebooky, standard timeline. You got your various options right up across the top. In the left column, oh, well, let's just see. We have a chronological timeline. Um, you have to trust me that it's chronological. Um, I had to hide whoever my um, friends' names and stuff because I didn't ask them whether they wanted to be in this video or not. So obviously, I didn't want to just reveal them for without having asked them first. But trust me, this is chronological in one of two ways which I will detail in a bit. Actually, you want wide detail, I'm good. I'll tell you now. Okay, so it can, your feeds and all feeds, whether it's a group, your group feed, your pages and stuff, are chronological in one of two ways. One is it's straight up chronological, meaning you'll see them as they are posted. And the second way is that you they'll show the ones that have the, the newest comments first. So the ones that are that people are engaging in will be front and center so that you can see what people are talking about and whatnot. That's actually not a bad option. I mean, it's obviously it's not an algorithm. Obviously, there's an opportunity for it to be gamed, but that's probably not going to happen on your personal stuff. That's that's something that could happen with groups and pages. So the good thing is that unlike the algorithms in like Facebook and Twitter, you can disable it. So you can disable it for pages knowing that someone might take advantage of that okay so you have your various options here you can invite your friends browse groups which is something obviously it's important that they want to um, promote because groups are the one of the big things that are gonna get people to migrate from Facebook and I'm gonna focus on groups later because that is what I wanted to kind of share with um, friends and family then they have a chat section 
your friends that you've started chats with in some way or the other, or it seems like they throw newer people up here as well. So here is the chronological timeline that you can't really see what the chronological, but you'll see that later. A little section about yourself up here. Um, I guess you can take yourself on, show yourself as online or invisible, which is cool. I mean, you can be lurking forever if you want, not let people know that you're here. Uh, these little silly little things are just little mini status updates, what you're eating, drinking, reading, and whatnot. This thing here is actually kind of cool. I kind of like this thing. It's a little photo screen, meaning that any sort of like video or photo that friends have um, shared will show up in this. So you can kind of like scroll down and get a quick overview, kind of like looking at um, if uh, Instagram had a mosaic timeline. So that's kind of cool. I, I like that. Okay, so let's go over to my profile and then we can see what your actual profile looks like. So left column has my profile, your profile image, which you can of course change. Ah, April. I didn't even think I got it back in April. Anyway, so a bunch of little details that you can fill out if you want, which I'm pretty much not going to. Again, header image that you could uh, customize, just like Facebook or Twitter or pretty much any other social network or attempted social network. Here are these little weird mini status things that are available on the homepage. I just don't know why they're even there. I don't really care about them. Maybe some people do. This really feels like some old school social network thing that someone just put in for the hell of it. It's not horrible, I guess. And then here is my timeline, which is strictly chronological, but so is Facebook and Twitter for your own actual timeline. So this is not anything new. What I do like is that right here on the, in the bottom right is an option are some immediate privacy and sharing options. Whether you want your profile to be included in search, whether you want contacts to see or other contacts, um, contacts being friends, and whether your friends can download the photos that you share. Um, obviously, you can always, there's always ways around not allowing people to download stuff, but I assume that if you have friends that it'd be okay for them to download pictures, especially since they might be in the pictures and whatnot. And lastly, on the bottom left here, you have a sharing link that you can use to invite people, so that way people can join and find you. So if we go over here, right below the um, header image, and, and I kind of really dig this overall because it's very simply and cleanly laid out, and it's amazing um, how much easier things can be when you don't have to squeeze in advertising. You can actually make full use of the space for your user, for your user interface. You can go to see your contacts, which they're calling contacts, not friends, which I guess seems more realistic. I don't know, I guess I kind of got used to friends. And then obviously I'm not going to show you all the friends because I did not ask them whether uh, they wanted to be here or not. But you could also see who you've invited, who hasn't responded, and all those people you blocked. And I only have one person blocked because I had a friend that I searched for and their name came up twice and I didn't know who was who. So once I figured out which one it really was, I just blocked the other one so I wouldn't actually see them. So I didn't actually encounter any uh, douchebag here yet. The next tab here is photos and videos, and you can see all your photos and videos, which is not um, not a lot for me at this moment. Um, there's a lovely picture of Dolomite, the human tornado himself. And you can divide your, you can create photo albums, just like Facebook, which is helpful. Um, I don't know if you can actually create an album that you can, sh that you can invite people to um, uh, contribute to or not, but overall this is pretty cool and you can hashtag it. Now this is actually really useful because when you click the hashtags thing, you can see the various photos that you hashtag. So, um, you know, if you um, hashtag something like Friendsgiving, all your Friendsgiving pictures will come up. So I think that's actually pretty cool. And finally you have groups and I just made a group and just for the hell of it, I live in St. Pete and so it's called St. Pete Shazazzle, but we will check out the group um, Actually, we're gonna check out the groups next. Actually, no, you won't skip the groups next. We'll just go to chat. So, obviously, I've hidden parts of it. It's just a standard chat thing. Um, it's just nicely laid out. Um, but um, if you have a chat ongoing, especially on a friend's page, the, it will have this little thing right at the bottom. Now, when you start a chat, what's kind of... Groups have chats, too. So here's a uh, comic art 
um, group them in, that I'm in that you can have a group chat. So this feels a bit like um, Discord. So that's kind of cool, especially since they also have the voice option as well. So chats are pretty straightforward. Now notice I don't see, I looked around here, There's I, I don't see anything for this secret chat that they've talked about. But uh, I do like the idea of this, that secret chat exists. Okay, let's go over the groups. So these are the various groups I'm in. Um, I made one so far, this St. Peach's Azzle. Um, actually, you know what, I made this other one too, but I haven't really done anything to it, so I'm not sure why it's not appearing. And this is a group I joined, Daily Comic Art. And here's the, um, there's a MeWe group that gives updates. So that's pretty useful. And one thing that, so, you know, they keep you up to date on what's going on with MeWe and, um, they will mention this, um, this Danny Garcia as being an investor, CEO of Seven Bucks Productions. If you don't know Seven Bucks Productions, that is the Rocks production company. So if she's an investor, that means he's involved here. And um, you'll see in a sec. So here you'll see everything is currently chronological. There's really obviously not a lot of content. It's really just the MeWe folks. But you can browse groups if you whether you click the browse groups here or view all groups here it opens a modal window and you can see all the various groups that are here so far so i don't know i haven't really what the couple's looking for a third okay so there's uh well i guess yeah anyway so tons of groups here um i've really not explored a whole lot um, obviously they don't have tons of members but you know maybe it's better to not have like a group of ten thousand people so let's make a group and see what the various options are because this is what a lot of people who are um, friends and family are going to be interested in. How do we keep in touch with the people we know? Okay, so group name, we have a very fantastic group name called Test Group. You can add a description. So exciting there. And you can choose a category and they got a lot of categories. So let's just say it's a runners. Fantastic. And then you can either choose one of their provided photos or upload a photo i'm just going to grab a picture and then you can choose a group color which sounds interesting and then click next so how can people join your group it can be private invite only it'd be open it means anyone can join and then you can choose whether this group is in the directory or not which is cool and then selective which is um meaning it's people can request to join but it requires admin approval so all of your basic things are here and um, you can also choose whether the group is in a directory or not. So there's some good privacy controls for groups. And finally, and I actually like this one here, allow people to reshare posts outside this group. I actually dig that. Um, obviously it wouldn't stop people from taking a screen share, but if you don't want the content in a group to be shared, first of all, if you really have content that shouldn't be shared outside of a group, it probably doesn't, shouldn't even be in the group anyway, at least to be safe. But at least disabling this means people can't just take a post and reshare it. And then you can also set up questions. Why do you, you know? Why do you want to join the group? So you, people can you can use that as the um, barometer for whether you're going to let somebody in or not. And then what permissions do the members have? Whether they can just comment and chat, whether they can post with approval, or whether they can be a full contributor, or they can post with impunity. And then there is an option to customize. This is actually new. So you can decide whether they can just post or just comment and chat and or whether you can disable the ability to invite other people. So that's pretty cool. Finish. You're done. Here's a new group. Here's the group color. You can set a new. You can set your profile image to be different for every group you're in. And then you can set your whether you want your notifications for um, group posts and group chats. Now, group chats, if I recall correctly, can be deleted on a per group basis. So a group page is very much like a profile page and you'll see it makes sense because you want things to be intuitive and look similar from page to page to page. So you can see all the members, whether they're photos and videos. You can have files uploaded and you can make folders. So this is useful for some organizations and groups where you want to have files that people can download. And here's the important part, events. Can we have group events? Because that's really the biggest thing I get out of Facebook is being able to keep in touch with my local groups and local people and organize with them. So there are events and you can create new events saying, 
idea, upload a photo, event name, add a location, start times, descriptions, reminders, and repeats, and then you can invite everyone in the group or not. And I'm hoping that this invite group, invite all group members, is not like Facebook, where you can only invite like so many people. I mean, obviously, this could be used for spamming purposes, but hopefully that wouldn't happen. Plus, they have a specific thing against spamming, and if they enforce their policies, if you keep spamming your group members with events, eventually I think that group is going to get shut down, as it should. And then you can choose whether to create a post in the group or not, for everyone to see. And finally, you can just create... well, I'm not going to create an event right now. I will check another event that I've made, just to show you what it looks like. And here are your group settings. Group name, description, photo. In the advances, you can transfer the ownership of the group to another admin or just delete it altogether. So for membership, you can change whether it was a private or selective group or whether it's open and so forth, what the initial permissions for group members are, what the profile questions are, whether people can reshare posts, what members can actually do. This is more um, fine grained control than just the um, membership options, what the group notifications are, and what you actually get. So I'm assuming that a group member would be able to come to this notification preferences page and decide what they want to receive. And then finally, group chat, whether it's on or off. I'm just turn it off because maybe we don't need that. And then it gives you, it tells you exactly what your permissions are. And if you want to share the group over here on the left, there it is. If you want to invite your friends, Here's the basic options. So it looks like all the options that you really need for a group are here. So I'm going to go over to this little group I made and look at the events because I had made a test event back in, I guess, was it October? Yes, here's the test event, October 19th. And the event has posts just like in Facebook. You get your various event details right here. And then you can just go to the group. So this actual, this actual layout is actually, seems like a little bit more intuitive than Facebook. You can see who the attendees are, who's going, I guess who's not going, who's been invited. I mean, I haven't had an opportunity to invite people for anything yet, so I assume it's going to work similar to Facebook, whether there are any photos and videos here, same thing with the tags, and then the settings. So you can adjust the event details as needed, transfer event ownership. Um, it's just well laid out. I just really like the user interface here. Everything is super sensible. Everything is laid out in a consistent fashion. Um, some, a lot of times with Facebook still, like it just feels like you're just looking for things and you don't know where the fuck they are. Okay, and event chat. That's, ooh, I like this idea of event chat. I mean, people can talk about a specific event, like, you know, let's say um, you're gonna go, uh, you know, check out the Christmas tree lighting in town and then everyone can keep their chat localized for questions and events and as opposed to making a post where, hmm, I like it. I, I think uh, there are possibilities here, so there's some good possibilities. Okay, so let's see, after group, let's head over to pages. Now, I'm not really following any pages so far, except for The Rock, you know, just cause, you know, he's entertaining. Now, if you look at, if you browse, again, like on the groups page, you can browse pages here or view all pages here, it's gonna pull up a modal and it'll show you all the pages there are. And you'll notice there are a lot of news things here, including, you know, Fox is prominent um, as a featured page. There are various company pages. Um, I think any company worth the salt is going to get onto a platform and be prepared to take advantage of it for when it reaches, before it reaches critical mass. So they got brands, uh, they got uh, artists, entertainment, like The Rock. Oh, look, Trump's here. Um, Michael Jackson is not alive. And this is not the official account of Michael Jackson. Interesting. I wonder if that would count under impersonation or whether it's an actual okay to have a fan account. Not the official. That's interesting. Anyway. And Danny Garcia has our official page. So, pages are similar. Here it is. Totally um, chronological. Useful. And... Um, as I mentioned, The Rock's ex is an investor, and so therefore, um, she's the CEO of Seven Bucks Productions, he owns Seven Bucks Productions, so therefore, technically, he's an investor. So he's actually uh, contributing to this platform. And I remember looking at this and thinking, like, my God, there's a size difference between Danny DeFito and The Rock. The Rock's not even standing up straight. Okay, so let's go to his page, just see what it looks like. 
and surprisingly or not surprisingly it is looking it looks just like a profile page it is very similar to group everything is similar and I really really like that because the options you expect the share link is in the same place on the left on the right side are options for I'm um, seeing like latest posts and tags and stuff um, obviously they have the header image you can scroll you can see what what its photos are and you can see the about oh let me just peek back at the photos again same exact organization photo stream as the albums and tags really liking this and then a simple about page now let's now if we want to create a page this is the interesting wrinkle to me because obviously how are they gonna make money Facebook make money makes money hand over fist by being complete like um greedy assholes how is me we gonna make money well it costs two bucks a month to have a page I really like this because it cuts down on the crap that people are gonna be making pages about so I'm probably gonna start an artist page here and maybe make it my only artist page um, and see how that goes but I dig the fact that you have to pay for pages because that's gonna get rid of a lot of the chaff so lastly there is an events tab here and it just shows you all your events so I go back to October here's the test event and another test event I made using a mobile app there is a mobile app um, that is still not as good as the Facebook app but has all the features the only thing they need to work on is to make the events more prominent so you can of course create new events here and you can have a private event or a totally open event so if you go to create private same thing um, as we had before you see uh, image which you can also upload names locations and all that and whether guests can invite friends or not and whether posts need to be approved and whether it's a repeating event so I dig that all of it makes sense and here's a new open event which is means totally public and then you can post that to your timeline and then but you can also post whether uh, choose whether posts are approved by you or not so it gives you a lot of control a lot of the control that we really expect if you click on the logo here it just goes back to your page the first page that we start off with if you do search it's actually kind of a helpful search I'll just put in my name and then we get to see what are the top selections whether they're just members just a really nice UI I'm just so much happier with this UI than with Facebook's just a load of crap especially their piss poor searching Ooh, I gotta hide that and posts so it's good stuff so this is where um, you'll see the uh, little cart symbol for how they make money one you just donate to them you can buy stickers for use in chat you can buy emoji you can buy subscriptions currently they have subscription pages you can add voice and video calling for two bucks a month that's pretty cool and they had cloud storage so everyone gets like it starts with um, eight gigabytes free and you can add more storage so that this actually makes sense because storage space is something that costs money so obviously Facebook is quote unquote free but they need their ad revenue to cover their expenses which includes both the bandwidth meaning how much um, data is sent and received by the site and that's pretty cool you can order stuff here and that's how they're gonna make money and that makes sense I mean they have to make money in some way so these are legitimate ways of making money so I'm gonna guess that they're gonna come up with different ideas for subscriptions because that's probably their best bet for having consistent income so after the store you have um your up here you got your notifications just tells you what people have commented on and whatnot and birthdays and all that and then finally your options here so my profile will send you back right to your profile this is actually it feels a little easier than Facebook um, because you know I always have to be like which one am I supposed to click on in the upper right in Facebook so you can go to see all your contacts which I'm not going to because I want to I don't want to have to hide the page so my cloud is actually the stuff you've uploaded and then how much space you have so once you hit 8 gigabytes of pictures you're going to have to pay for more storage if you want or you can delete photos one of those either of those things and last let's see and finally here let's the important thing settings so if we go to your settings here's your link that's your page and you can set your link um, you can edit it right here as you can see you know email password enter your birthday if you want and I like the advances simply delete my account nice and simple 
keep track of your subscriptions and purchases there. All of your privacy and sharing options right here. Who can send you contact requests, um, whether your contacts can see other contacts, whether you want to sync your contacts in your address book, which I totally don't want to. Um, and whether you want to download, people can download timeline or private photos. Set up your notifications and alerts. Useful stuff. Feed preferences. Okay. This is where you can set your feed order to show either new posts or posts with new comments. And you can do that for your home feed, all your private posts, your groups, and your pages. And that's it. Really simple, super straightforward. And then you can see all of your groups right here, whether you get group alerts, um, whether you're involved in group chat, and so forth. So that's pretty much it. It's pretty cool. Um, I definitely check it out. And man, this is a much longer video than I thought it'd be. My apologies. Hope you all have a good day.